Now, when you're doing drawing, sometimes it's actually quite sort of preferable to define the, the type of material that you're going to be having on a surface. And sometimes what we want to do is to do a sort of a more general assembly kind of drawing uh, and maybe even sort of depict that sort of surface material on your drawing. So, for example, I may well wish to show bricks on this, um, on this example that we've got here. And the way that I'm going to do that, so obviously these bricks are going to be in these big sort of gappy spaces here uh, where the walls are supposed to be. Uh, it's not obvious that they're, they're walls, they do look like just gaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called hatching. And the hatching is available from my home tab on my ribbon bar. And it's this little icon here. You can see it's actually got little hatch sort of lines there in the diagram. And you can see there it's uh, giving me a little bit of information about this and about what hatching is. So I'll click on that and up comes my hatch dialog box. Now, first thing I want to do is to pick the pattern. Now I could, if I knew what it was, pick from any one of these uh, from the drop down, but really what I want to do is click on these three dots and that gives me a little pictogram diagram showing me what each one of those bricks or each one of those um, names is. So for example, I just want my standard brick there, so I'll click OK. I'll make it annotative. We've, we've seen before how uh, it's a good idea to, to sort of set things like this to be annotative so that they stay the same scale no matter what scale your drawing is. And we'll talk about this option here, this create separate hatches in a minute. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to press this little button down here, which is the expand, and I'm going to pick what type of island detection I've got. Now you can see here this normal island detection may not be suitable for everything. Uh, and depending on what you want to do, you can hatch over the top of everything, or you can do what I'm going to do, which is use a, an outer boundary for my hatches. Now, because of the size of this dialog box, now I'm going to press this button in, and we're just going to um, push that, that section away. My draw order will always be send behind boundary. I really can't think of a time when I'm going to want to have it in front of the boundary. Um, so to be honest with you, that can stay as it is. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to say add a pick point. And what that allows me to do is when I come back to my, my drawing here, you'll notice the dialog box instantly disappears. I now have to pick an internal point of the wall that I'm interested in. And as I do that, you can see these dotted lines appear that show the boundaries. So when I'm done with those, I'll right click and I'll press uh, preview. And that just gives me an idea of what each of these, these hatches will look like. So I think the scale on that is quite nice, so I'll press enter. There is of course one problem with that, and that is that that hatch is all one object. Now it may well be that you want the hatch to be one object, and to be honest with you, it, it can be a lot easier. But what happens if we want to edit the scale of one of those hatches? We want it to be maybe slightly bigger. Well, I've deleted all the, the, the hatch that was there before, and I'll come back in. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, create separate hatches. OK. Now I'll say add pick points. And I can carry on making my pick points the same way as I did before. I can right click and enter. Uh, and I'll just click OK for that. But now, when I mouse over or hover over each one of these, they're separate. And if I double click on one of those hatches, it brings up my hatch dialog to which I can change the scale to maybe two. Click OK. And you can now see that the hatch for that one specific bit of wall there now looks like breeze blocks, where it may not have been obvious to whoever was going to be doing the building that this particular section was supposed to be stripped back breeze block and these were supposed to be bricks. So it's a good way of sort of very quickly and very easily visually indicating to whoever it is who's going to be reading your drawings how they should sort of be looking at the materials and maybe paying attention to the material schedule a little bit more. So really that's hatching and how you use hatching. It's not um, that hard. If I want to do something for the roof, what I might do is I might say hatch again. And then what I'm going to do with that is I'll go to my display hatches here and maybe I'll try and pick something that looks a bit like a roof tile. Um, 
a bit difficult to say the uh, the options we have here aren't completely um, forthcoming maybe I'll just pick oh I don't know maybe I'll just pick this one click OK make sure we're set to outer click a point there let's see what that looks like as a preview yeah that'll do so I'll press enter so that's all very well and good um, but it can look a little bit confusing so maybe what I want to do is consider putting uh, a gradient in there just a picture gradient so what I can do with that is from my draw dialog you'll see we've got here if I pin that we've got this thing here called gradient and in actual fact if I click on gradient what you'll find is that it's the other half of the hatch dialog so it's still pretty much the same and what I can do with that is maybe I'll pick uh, a shade I know that one looks nice enough that gradient there and again I'll make sure that everything is set the way it was before so outer yep that's good and I can just add my pick point as being this one here right click and preview now that's going to look a little bit odd especially if I just right click on that but what you'll find is if I now mouse around you you can see we've still got the hatch the underlying hatch in there yeah so if I select that hatch and I right click on it what I should be able to do is I should be able to bring that to the front so I will do that by saying edit hatch and my draw order where it says do not change I'm going to say bring to front and then I'll click OK what you find is now when I click away from that what we've got albeit I wouldn't necessarily put a blue sky gradient on a roof and um, what we've got is we've got a gradient over the top of our hatch so we've started to annotate this drawing a little bit more make things a little bit more obvious for the person who's going to be looking at it that in actual fact this is something that they should be paying attention to